Hello, my garden friends. This is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com. It's the first week of September, 2020, and I wanted to take a quick walk around the permaculture food forest uh, here in Ocean County, New Jersey, and show you what it looks like in September. Now this very front part, right up against the road, I refer to as the meadow strip. Uh, there weren't many meadow plants that came up in this area this year, though I spread wildflower seed, native wildflower seed twice, um, once in very early spring, and then once in June because not much came up. And I think it was because the thatch was very thick. Uh, I didn't put a mower over it in early spring. I just used a weed whacker and I, um, trimmed it down so that it was uh, still about five or six inches long but I think that the thatch was just too thick for the seed to uh, penetrate and germinate well so the things that came up really were just a few things receded but it was mostly uh, perennials that came back up through it but we do have a few things here that really caught on and uh, some things that I've actually put in this season that I think are going to come back beautifully next year. I have some there's uh, partridge pea and uh, it's actually a sensitive it looks like a sensitive fern it's closed up now because it's late in the afternoon but those leaves spread out and it looks really lovely during the day. I put in some oregano there uh, as well as some yarrow is coming up. There's also some uh, dianthus there which had come up and flowered and I don't know if that's just regrowing or if it's reseeded in that spot. I put another peony over there that I moved from my other property uh, and there is a hibiscus that's really catching on. There's a small rose and a Montauk daisy. There's some liatris, and that's New Jersey tea. New Jersey tea flowers in early summer. It's just gonna be about that size. That's about the mature size of the plant. It's a really a lovely size and shape for a landscaping shrub. Uh, and the flowers are like a white very small foamy kind of flower and the pollinators just love it. This is a stragolus and back here uh, I have an aster that should be blooming really soon. That there is a quince. It's a Russian quince tree and back there that other small tree is a sweet cherry and I have a yucca and that is, these are just some annuals that I picked up uh, to fill in the space a little bit and to show some color. But um, that is anise hyssop. And we'll just walk through this fairly quickly. This is um, uh, fennel and that should come back next year. There's a tomato that came out up out of compost uh, that I put down and then this is actually called purple love grass and you can see why they call it that hopefully you can see it in the video that the seeds uh, on the ends of that grass are just this lovely pinkish purple color it's so pretty and that's a native to this area I did not plant it it actually got planted by the birds that like to hang out on the wire just overhead um, and then there's an aster there and another hibiscus and some comfrey back behind it. So this is the front bed and it has Nanking cherry and sedum. And here's a bearberry off to the side of the bed. And that, I, I'm pretty sure it's called Kinnick Kinnick. And it's just a low growing ground cover. It's kind of a sub shrub. Uh, and it will produce edible berries. This is prickly pear cactus. That's New Jersey's only native cactus. This is a beach plum. Beach plums 
will get to be about six to ten feet and depending on the shrub it will grow it can grow more upright like this one back here that's also a beach plum but sometimes they really stretch out laterally and it's more of a horizontal habit uh, so this one seems to want to be a low growing variety and and it looks like it's going to reach out sideways i'm okay with that i like it that it's kind of staying low um and this is another beach plum this is great blue lobelia and the butterflies love this i see butterflies all over that and that's a perennial and it's native and it comes back every year this is an asian pear um these are blooming now. These are um, garlic chives and they're blooming and wasps really love these little flowers. I see wasps all over here at the height of the day. Um, wasps are not necessarily a bad thing in the garden. They aren't the bad guys that their reputation sets them up for. You can see there's a wasp on there right now. Um, so wasps tend to be really great pals for you in the garden if you have trouble with a lot of caterpillars eating your crops. So wasps really, especially the ground wasps, like to hunt caterpillars and they grab them and fly off with them and bring them back into the ground, into their nests, and it feeds their babies. So um, wasps aren't necessarily a bad thing to have. This is a jujube. It's my first jujube on the jujube tree. So let's see the variety of this tree. Is the Shanxi Lee jujube. And it does have a pollinator very close by. Whoop. Right over to this bed. And this is the Lang jujube. So in this bed we have some cone flower. I've left the seed heads on and I intend to leave them on through the winter. Um, you might think it looks a little weird, but the songbirds will love eating those seeds. So once a lot of those seeds are gone, I'll probably cut down those stems. But um, while the seeds are still hanging out, I'm gonna leave them there as bird food. Um, this is a buffalo berry right next to, but right up against um, a sage plant that has just done really well. Every time we have some rain, that seems to put on a flush of new growth. Uh, this is an apricot, and we have a service berry down here that seems to be, I don't know, it's just, it's having a little trouble catching on, and I'm hoping next year it really grabs on and starts to put on a lot more growth. It's a very small, gro slow growing shrub is the service berry, at least in sandy soil. I've found that to be true. This is the high bush cranberry and there are some red berries on there. It's in the viburnum family. Uh, we have the ground cover of strawberries in between all the plants. Over here in this bed, I have two apple trees, and uh, this is a red leaf sand cherry, and back there is a black aronia berry, and I have some iris and a couple of squash planted in this bed this year, um, and they did fairly well. There's a fennel, a bronze leafed fennel, and a rose. There's a, a young Baptisia, so it's not really as full as they get. Baptisia can really get very large. That's also called false indigo, and it's a nitrogen fixer, uh, but it's a perennial, so it's in the legume family, and it does improve the soil. Here is the other Baptisia that I have in the yard, and boy, this one is nice and big and is really full. The flowers in late spring are just wonderful. I love them. And then over here, we have another service berry. This one's fairly new. It's called a Saskatoon, and it was further back in the bed, so I did move it. Um, 
maybe a month and a half ago. So that's still very small. So I kind of set it back a little bit. Whenever you move a shrub or a tree, uh, you kind of take two steps back. Doesn't mean that it won't recover. It just it will take a little bit more time to grab on and start producing, kind of resetting the clock. This is the elderberry and the berries are on there and they are ripening and they're looking pretty great. I'm gonna have to start competing with the birds to get those elderberries soon. We are very close to harvest time there. Then we have the yastaberry in the back. Here's the pawpaw. These guys did great this year. They put on a lot of growth. This is probably um, maybe eight feet tall at this point. And we have the blueberries. That There's one blueberry, two, three. There's a fourth behind it and a fifth there. And this is the lingonberry. That is an evergreen sub shrub. It looks like it's having some trouble in the center and I'm not sure what's going on there. I may have to prune some of that out if I think it might be a diseased bit that's happening. So I, I might take some healthy looking parts from the edges, take that whole patch out and maybe move those healthy bits uh, to another bed and see if I can get that to recover. This is a red currant and another pawpaw. There's a basil and lemon balm. And this is just a trellis that I've got some tomatoes and a cucumber, but uh, this cucumber's seen better days. The, the wilt has started on those lower leaves and there are still a few leaves up at the top that look pretty good, but it's probably a better idea just to take it out since there seems to be some kind of disease uh, attacking it. These are Egyptian walking onions and you can see that the bowl bits on the top have already started to sprout. That is prime and perfect to take that top bulb, separate it into all the small bulbits, and replant it somewhere else in the yard. You can spread them out and you'll have all new plants. So they, they are just so easy to propagate Egyptian walking onions. They're a wonderful addition to a food forest garden. Uh, here's the other um, pawpaw. And this was my patch of Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes. When you plant sunchokes in the Northeast, um, for the most part, as long as you don't have pest problems, they will be there and they will multiply with very little care and um, in many different kinds of soil. However, I have issues with voles and voles love sunchokes. They are very nutritious and uh, they are a great source of calories. So you can't really blame them, but they did take them all down. This year, there are very few here. And I, and I have to say, when there is not a vole issue, this should be like a forest of sunchokes. I shouldn't be able to see through it for the amount of sunchokes that should be here. But it was really a pest issue this year that took them all down. So that's a little sad, but this is, these are not the only sunchokes that I have in the yard. There are sunchokes on the other side as well, on the other side of the driveway. So um, fear not, I, I am not cleaned out of my crop. Um, I do have some four o'clocks here. They're just lovely little flowers. And this year, for some reason, they're really only blooming and opening up in the very early morning. Usually four o'clock's open in the afternoon, hence the name, but uh, these guys are opening early in the morning. They receded from, from flowers that were here last year, and you can see that they came up again very readily. <laughs> um, that's a time that's in that pot, and I rarely even touch it. I Sometimes I spray it with the hose, but it is so carefree. Time is so easy to grow in the herb garden. 
Uh, and this is lemon balm. And then I have some cana lily there. And these are called lungwort. They're pulmonaria. And they have a beautiful flower. They kind of grow, they like the shade. They grow beautifully with ferns and hostas in a garden bed. Um, this is kind of a shady area of the yard for most of the morning. And then um, there will be flowers that come and they kind of remind me of Virginia bluebells if you're familiar with those kind of flowers. So this is also a wonderful and healthful medicinal herb. And I bought it in March, in the beginning of the COVID pandemic lockdown, because it's supposed to be really beneficial for respiratory ailments and you can make tea out of the leaves. And so that's why I purchased it to put it in the yard. And um, I'm just happy to have it because it's such an interesting looking plant. You can see that the variegation on the leaves almost looks like it was splattered with paint, but that's just the natural way that pulmonaria lungwort has their leaf um, adorned decoration. It's just uh, the coloring of those leaves. It's just very interesting. So that is the evening tour of the Front Yard Food Forest Garden in September 2020. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, it's getting kind of dark out here, so I can't really there's not really too much more to show you, except there's some basil there. I have a few hostas, um, a fern in the back there, and some Virginia um, sweet spire beside the fern. This is a witch hazel, and this will be one of the first things that bloom in the spring. Very late February, early March is when witch hazel blooms. Um, and then back there is a rhododendron. This is a really lovely uh, aster, aromatic aster, becomes just this huge looking shrub, but it'll be covered in purple blooms uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. And then some iris and a hydrangea. And then this is the rain garden. I have some American beauty berry here and the berries are really starting to form, but they will turn a a beautiful magenta color um, in the fall and they will stay throughout the winter. They'll be like a bubblegum color looking. It's really, they're really beautiful. And then those are pink turtle heads. They are a perennial and they're native to this area. So let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoyed the tour and please join me again soon. Okay everyone, bye-bye.